Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over the React Context API and what it is and how we could implement it in an app. So to begin with, the Context API is used to share data or state throughout the React component tree without having to pass it down through props at every level. And this is super helpful because it eliminates the problem of prop drilling. And prop drilling is just passing data down through several nested child components. And it becomes problematic as your app grows and many different components need access to the same data. Uh, it, become, it can become very hard to follow if that data is being passed down or drilled through many different levels. And so instead, you could create a context and then wrap that context around any components that need access to that context or that state. And then at any point in the tree, as long as they're a child of the context, they could use the use context hook and get access to the context state. And you don't have to pass down any props because you could just call the hook and get access to the state at any level. And so if we scroll down, we could see that the context is designed to share data that could be considered global. So things like the authenticated user, a theme, or a preferred language. So this type of data is likely going to be needed by many different components in our app, not just a couple. And so it wouldn't really be practical to have to pass the authenticated user to every single component and child component that is going to need it. So instead, we would just create a context for the user and then wrap that context around any component that's going to need it. So let's look at a practical example. So let's say we have a social media app that displays a list of posts and say we also have a nav bar that in that nav bar, we want to display a user icon if they're signed in. And this user icon is going to need to know if the user signed in. So we'll declare some piece of state at the top and that'll get passed down to the icon. And let's say also we have a post page where it displays a list of posts and then each post item is going to be its own component. And on that item, we want to have an edit icon. This edit icon will only be there if the user ID of the current post matches the current signed in user ID. And then let's say we have an add post form if the user signed in so that they could add a post on the post page. So these three components all need access to the user state. So we could pass that user in through the nav bar to the icon and then from the app to the post page to the post item and then all the way down here. But you could see that as your app grows, you're going to have to keep passing that state through the components. And at some point, it's just going to become very hard to follow. So instead, we could create an auth context at the top and just wrap our entire app with it so that all of these child components, no matter how far they are in the component tree, they could just tap into this context, get access to the state, and even update the state. And that update would be reflected in all the child components that are using that context. So let's look at this example in the code. So I have a basic app here, and it's the same example as in that diagram where you have a nav bar. And if the user signed in, there's this little avatar icon and it says log out. If they're signed out, it'll just be log in. And then we display a list of posts. And if the post user ID matches the signed in user ID, there will be this trash icon. So in our app component at the top level, I have some state here, which is just an object with the user ID property. And I'm passing this user into the nav bar through props. And so in the nav bar, I'm taking the user and I'm checking for the user ID. And if that's defined, I'll display log out. And I'll also display this avatar. Otherwise, I'll just display login. And then I'm also passing this user into the post page. And the post page, I'll just split this pane. I'll go back. So I'm passing it in at the post page here. And in here, I'm destructuring the user. And then I'm not even using it in the post page. I'm just passing it down again to the single post component. And then in the single post component, I'm mapping through each post item here and I'm outputting a post. And in here, I just grab that post and the user that was passed in. And then I check to see if the post user ID matches the signed in user ID. And if it does, I want to display the icon. So you could see that this piece of user state is being passed to the post page. And then from the post page, it's getting passed to the single post. And in here, I finally get access to it. And this is really the only place that I need it on the post page. So this, this step here is really unnecessary. Instead, ideally, I'd want to create a user context or an auth context with this user ID information. And then 
in this post component, I could just tap into that context without having to get it through props. So let me just remove it from the props there and remove it from the other areas. So let's create our context now. So we'll create a folder called context. And in here, we'll create a file called auth context. Now to create a context, we need to call the create context method. So we'll do const auth context equals create context. And that comes from React. So now that we have this auth context, we need to create a provider component. And a context provider is just like any other React component. So we'll create a component there and we'll call it the auth context provider. We want to export that. And in here, we're going to get the props. And now what we want to return is the auth context dot provider. And this is going to be a component. And this component takes a value prop. This value prop is going to be whatever we want the context state or the context data to be. So first, let's create some state in our provider. So I'm just going to go to the app and just copy this over and add that to the context. And then I'm going to pass this user in as the value for the auth context. And then as the children for the auth context, I want to output the props dot children. And so basically every React component will get the children in its props. And this is basically saying that we want to render an auth context provider giving the value of this user. And we want it to wrap all of the components children. And this will allow the component children here to get access to the value that we pass in, which in our case is this user object. So let me just import the use state hook here. And now we could use the provider in our app. So let's go back to the app and we want to wrap our entire app with it. So we'll just come in here and import the auth context provider. And then we'll just wrap this around our app container. So now our context provider is wrapping our container, which has the navbar and the post page. So these child components should have access to this provider state that we defined here in this value. So let's go back to the post component where we needed that user ID. And now in here, in order to get access to that context, we need to call the use context hook. So we'll do const user equals use context. And that comes from React. And in here, we need to pass in the context that we created. So that would be the auth context. And we actually need to export that from here. And now, in our post page, we should be able to import that. So now this use context hook returns that value object. So in our case, it'll be an object with a user ID and the number two. And so we're capturing this state object in the user here. And now the user dot user ID should be equal to whatever we defined here. So let's just save that and let's copy this into the nav bar. So we'll just paste that in. And now if we hit save, we should go back to our app and it should all work as before. And there it is. If we go back to the context and just remove the user ID and hit save and go back, you'll see that all those icons go away. And so all the components are updating based on the state defined in the context provider. So the last thing I want to do is give the components the ability to change the context state. And we could do that by calling the set user method. So we could just come down here and create um, little functions that will update the state. So we could do something like login, and that'll be equal to a function. And now this function is just going to call the set user function and set the user state to being signed in. So we'll just give it user ID of two. And then I want to duplicate this function and call this one log out. And this one is just going to set the state to an empty object. And now in order to pass these methods out to our different components so that they can call them, we need to add it to this value prop. We could just pass in an object here and the user will be equal to this object. And then we could just add login and that will be equal to 
this function, and then we'll also pass pass log out. Now the provider state is this object. So in our post, this now returns something like user and then you know the user ID object. So in here we could just come in and destructure the user and then this would all work the same. So let's do that in the nav bar as well. And now I want to give the ability to log out. So when we click this log out text here, I want to sign the user out. So we'll go in here and on the log out, we'll define an on click handler. And on here, I want to run function. And in here, I need to first get that log out function from this auth context. And then I could just call it in here. So if I go back to the app and I click log out, you should see that the user is logged out and I could just duplicate this same logic and add that to the login. First, I need to grab it from the context and just call it here. So now if I click log in, it signs them in. And when I click log out, it logs them back out. And you can see that all these components are re-rendering based on the context state. And so that becomes very useful. Now there's one last thing I want to show you guys. So usually when people use the context API, they won't be using it like this, where they call a use context and then pass in that context. Instead, they would go back to where they define the context and export another function, which would be a custom hook like use auth. And that'll be equal to a function that returns the output of use context and then pass in the context. So now use auth is going to be a function that returns the output of use context. And the output of use context is this value prop. So in our case, it's this object. So when we call use auth, it'll return this object. So now we could just take this and come to our post. And instead of calling use context and having to import and pass in the auth context every time, we could just call use auth and just import that and then it would work the same way. So in here again, we could get rid of use context and use our own custom hook. And now this all works the same. So this saves us all the effort of importing our specific context and the use context hook. We could just declare it once here and use this custom hook everywhere. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. It would help me out a ton. I'll see you guys in the next one.